May you bless everyone and may you also guide for those other instructors that will be here on our meeting today. This is all we ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. I am very thankful because you're here and that we were able to see each other for the first time. So in behalf of the management under uh, Chancellor Anshari P. Ali, I would like to say thank you for your indulgence and for your patience. So here we will be knowing uh, some of our uh, friends from Dubai and also from India and to the rest of those teams. Okay, so to start with, allow me to share my screen. Can you see my screen now? Hello, can you see my screen now? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Okay, legal for the basis. graduate studies, here are the legal bases. Yes. The code here. Of we also have the memoranda or memorandum circulars and orders. We also follow the BOR resolutions and the special orders. Okay, so for the graduate studies, we have the different coordinators. Namely, we have Dr. Presi Regalado, our MAED program coordinator, Dr. Salome Sistina, SK MAED, MAED program coordinator, yours truly for the PhD, SDS, and MDM, and Dr. Uh, Professor Plaga, we have uh, as the MPA and MAPS program coordinator. For the MS Bio, we have Dr. Camille Silvosa. Dr. Jay Buscano as our MSC Program Coordinator, Engineer Dr. Charlie Taclendo, our MSME SE, uh, CE Program Coordinator, and of course, Dr. Pinto de Latin, BPA, our SK Extension Provincial Coordinator. All right, for the graduate studies, we have here the different staff. All right, so we also have Sir Atilien Farnsovitz, our special assistant for the School of Graduate Studies. Parties. Okay, for the second agenda, we have the MSU CHED policies, standards, and guidelines. Accordingly, based on CHED Memorandum number four series of 2020, we have flexible learning as uh, our learner centered approach, and that is deeply rooted in the needs of the students. The main objective should be based, okay, as we provide learners with most flexibility on the learning content for schedules, access, and innovative assessment. Okay, for this uh, agenda, uh, for the CHED policy or PSGs, we have to inculcate the HAL, uh, uh, HAL principle, and that is when it comes to delivery of schedules, so that is the pacing, the place or physical location, and the mode. These are the things that we took into consideration before we will finalize our instructional model. But basically, based on CHED and according to uh, the various uh, webinars that I attended, we uh, the CHED has been employing the 5 E's instructional model. But there are also universities, they just translate 5 E models into three, uh, four E's. Okay, so later I will be discussing how our syllabus will be as, um, designed in such a way that we can have this kind of model adapted in our syllabus per memorandum guidelines of the gen. Okay, so accordingly from our MSU grading system, so the grading system in the graduate program, both master's and doctoral programs, Per BOR resolution number 72 series of 1992 as amended by BOR resolution number 12 series of 1997. So we have here the cut a three as our passing mark. Okay. And for the master's program, they have to maintain a weighted grade or GPA of two, while in the doctoral program, must maintain students must maintain a GPA of at least 1.75 so that's according to the university uh, graduate program uh, student's handbook of msu graduate school revised in 2015. so this would be the you know the demarcation point on how we're gonna rate our students okay so with regards to the submission of grades according to article 370 university code Every faculty member shall submit his or her report of grades 
as soon as possible after the final examination at the end of each term. A period of five days is ordinarily allowed for each section for the grading of papers and the preparation of the report of grades, provided that all report of grades must be submitted not later than seven days after the last day of the examination period. However, in justifiable cases, deviation from the above rules may be authorized by the president upon recommendation of the vice president for academic affairs. Another thing that we should take note is that no instructor may be required to furnish grades in any one course more often than twice a semester. Secondly, no uh, thirdly, no faculty member shall change any grade after the report of records has been submitted to the secretary or assistant dean of the college and filed with the registrar. In exceptional cases where an error has been committed, the instructor may request authority from the academic planning committee to make the necessary change. If the request is granted, a copy of the resolution of the APC authorizing the change shall be forwarded to the Office of the Registrar for Recording and Filing. Okay, now let's proceed to the one, and this is the latest uh, mandate from CHED. So accordingly, um, CHED Memorandum Number 15, Series of 2019, the PSG regarding graduate programs. Accordingly, uh, graduate programs constitute a level of or stage of academic work that is considered an advanced program of study. It focuses on a particular or interdisciplinary, interdisciplinary academic discipline or profession that involves certain objectives such as rigorous evaluation of work and interaction with professors and peers, professional experience via internships, teaching and research, and third, production of original research or creative work. So on this, at this, uh, another, in addition to this CHED memorandum, we also have the faculty requirements. It says, generally, faculty teaching in graduate programs, especially the doctoral level, shall be holders of doctoral degree who have track record of scholarly work, research or creative work, and with publications in refereed journals and or books published in reputable academic publishing companies. Lastly, for scholarly work, faculty members are expected to show proof of publications in refereed academic journals, internationally or nationally indexed journals, or in industry professional based journals. So along this line, um, it is expected that the graduate programs of professors or shall we say lecturers, they are really encouraged to have the publication, especially so that we are now applying for level three accreditation and they have been computing ratio. One professor or a doctorate degree professor should have at least three or more publications. So along that line, Anyways, we are still growing to that. That's why we have some people here who will be helping us with regards to research and publication. Okay, now let's talk, talk about data privacy. And this is very sensitive. So I, ho I hope everyone will take heed on this uh, 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 discussion. So first, with regards to data privacy, screen capturing, sharing, posting in social media, or any other similar kind of processing of chats, images, videos, and sounds involving their classmates and teachers during online classes may, may be subject to data privacy and other related regulations. So along this line, we really have to take note that before we will start, our discussion or at the start of our first online meeting or session with our students, we have to take note that we are aware on these things because um, 
there are cases right now uh, wherein other professors from very other universities have been encountering problems related to the data privacy. Okay, secondly, online classes may be recorded for purposes of viewing by learners who may have missed a particular class subject to existing school policies on attendance. It is best that learners are informed before this processing activity. So perhaps I suggest there would be, uh, I, I know you have your personal guidelines as to how you're going to conduct your online session. So with regards to this, we will be discussing more of this later. Okay, so let me al allow me to read first the data privacy as uh, per um, required by NPC. Okay, so for communication involving personal data such as exam grades, results of assignments, report cards, reminders on unpaid school fees should be sent directly to the concerned recipient and should never be posted in a manner that can be accessed or seen publicly. Okay, so here are the do's for online learning under the data privacy government.ph okay so making the webcam use should be optional in online classes second recording online classes is okay as long as it has legitimate uses example review the lecture presentation and viewing by students who are unable to attend third letting students decide whether they should turn on the cameras of their devices, they should be permitted to use virtual backgrounds and funny filters. Okay, so another duo, number four, asking questions regularly to assess students' understanding is, is highly encouraged and allowing them also to respond through audio or video conferencing apps, chat features such as polls and nonverbal actions such as thumbs up instead of requiring them to return on their cameras okay so next we shall have the other slide okay. the do the don'ts for online learning you have to take heed of this so number one posting announcement that involve personal data such as grades and results of assignments. For example, exam results should be given on individual basis. So we are discouraged to post announcement that involve personal data. Say, for example, in your FB or in your Google Classroom or chat, you will be posting the uh, personal data like cell phone number. Okay, so hindi po yan allowed. Second, allowing students to submit projects and assessment via social media platforms. So, part siya na gina discourage. That's why we have the Moodle and uh, with the use of also of the Google Classroom instead of having it submitted with, via social media platforms. Okay, third, storing personal data collected as part of the class in a personal account or device. In other words, uh, personal data is really discouraged unless it is a necessity for the classroom performance or whatsoever. Fourth, correlating students use and eye contact with participation, grading, and attendance. Say, for example, you will be giving students plus points if their cameras are on. So we are discouraging this kind of practice. Okay, so here another one is we have to removes uh, removing students from class or forcing them to turn on their cameras so this is also discouraged because uh, everybody or all students have the uh, what we call liberty whether to turn on their cameras or not so it is indeed uh, important that uh, we are taking heed of the do's and don'ts for online learning Okay, so with regards to class size, although we have been doing a you know, virtual classroom, but allow me to read the VOR guidelines regarding this. So in MSU, a regular class size shall be have a minimum of 25 students and a maximum of 50 students. 
that is based on the university code. And then the minimum number of students shall hold two for basic or major courses. Okay. Another one, uh, the thing that I would like to em put emphasis is on a laboratory class, which shall have 40 students per instructor. Okay, so that's based on the university code. Okay, regarding the postponement of classes, because I know sometimes these things are inevitable. Okay, so no member of the faculty shall postpone the holding of his or her class to any hour other than that officially scheduled, nor he or she meets his or her students for class or consultation in any unscheduled room or place except when expressly permitted to do by the dean or director of academic unit. So in other words, as much as possible, we have our schedule okay, of our load. So we really have to ensure that we follow. However, if there would be postponement because of emergency cases, because there are things that are beyond our control. So it, it's better that we have to inform the, you know, the office so we can also uh, inform our students regarding that. So according to accepted university practice, each faculty member shall maintain a class record. So we're talking about class record this time. So for each subject, indicating the names of the students in alphabetical order and their corresponding absences and grades for recitation, quizzes, periodic examinations, and final grades. Okay, so next would be the class record. If accept, wait lang po. We may not accept. Sorry. Can you see my screen? Sorry for the interruption. Okay. Naging black siya, ma'am. Oh, no. Okay, may nagpasok kasi. Wait lang po, ha? I will stop sharing. By the way, later we will have some discussion pertaining to the different faculty and new faculty that we have here. So I have to send forth first with regards to the main course of our session and this is it. All right, so regarding the uh, class record, the class record will greatly help the faculty member in the accomplishment of the report of grades. So to avoid entry errors of the student in each subject, the faculty concerned should read the list of the students in the class record during classes and find out if all the names of the students have been called. So here, these are actually during conventional, I mean, uh, not non-online. So if you are going to have the online, there is an app in the Google Meet because we are encouraged to use the Google Meet. There is an app that the moment you turn off the Google Meet, automatically it will also download the class attendance. And this would be used to uh, no, as um, a main main evidence for the class recording of the attendance of the students. Okay, so extreme care should be taken by the faculty member to ensure that all students duly enrolled or his or her subjects are promptly properly listed in his or her class record. Okay, so another agenda. So we have done discussing about the SGS landscape. We also have the MSU chat policy standards and guidelines. And this time, and I, we will now put more emphasis on your course syllabus. Okay, so please be reminded that uh, if you notice in our first encounter, no, in our uh, distribution of documents, we really put emphasis on course syllabus because uh, we are applying for COPC and CHED accreditation level 3 and they have been requiring us to have a uniform template when it comes to core syllabus. So with core syllabus, we are employing the modified instructional model by baby 1997. So let me put it this way. So first, uh, this is actually high, um, encouraged by CHED. So... Kung ang DepEd, if DepEd has been employing the 
five A's for Chad. They have been encouraging the use of four, uh, five P's. But in MSU, if you are interested, to, if you would like to have the mod, uh, modified instructional model of baby, we can have the four E's. Okay, so once you say engagement indicators, there is that you know, it create it creates students a curiosity so what are the indicators um that we need to consider if we we are on this level so as uh, example for this engage is that the teacher will uh, allow the students to watch us a video clip so with that video you create or you raise questions or elicit responses that uncover what the students think about the concepts but take note this one belongs to this one belongs to lots or lower order thinking skills okay second level so as you engage the students other teachers they employ activity games they also have the mentimeter as an engaged part but on the second level we have the explore as our instructional model the indicators there is that students will work together without direct instruction. So in other words, you do uh, instructions or um, somewhat um, posting activities in your Moodle or VLE can be considered as, uh, can fall under this phase, the explore level. So here the students can also listen, observe, or make interaction among themselves using forum under model okay but however this thing still belongs to lots okay so third level we have the elaborate so here the students can apply or extend concepts and skills okay students will also discuss what they learn how will they learn or apply the concepts based on the current uh, trends okay so here and the last one we have evaluate these indicators okay the different indicators are the following we assess students knowledge and skills we provide students with formative feedback to enhance their thinking or behaviors and we can also ask open-ended questions so again all of these engage they belong to you engage activities under this phase they still belong under lower order thinking skills explore still lower order thinking skills we have now the hats once they were able to elaborate or higher order thinking skills and so we evaluate okay moving on i have already sought permission to engineer dr taklendo so here's the sample of his um, syllabus so uh, can you read no is this clear hello yes, yes it's okay. clear so ito po yung uh this were the uh, module one contents okay or we call this all as uh, competencies all right and under these competencies under module one these are the different topics if you have, as you can see based on our sample syllabus that i have given you we have divided them into five but i only show the four the four parts because these are the focus of our discussion so under this module we can see here four this is now what we call the instructional design preferred by the graduate school okay so engage a sample of that would be through google meet you can employ engagement here and it can can have also the sample for that would be activities or games no? or just simple uh, singing or others they have been doing mentimeter no? for high-end uh, high-end faculty or those who had subscribed to mentimeters they are doing this then we have the second level explore but take note all of these things were uh, depend uh, it, those things depends on the topics that you would like to insert on okay so all of these are just instructional design on how you gonna prorate all the concepts so that students will learn better and the last one we have 
hear the evaluation and assessment. And it can be for in the form of summative, formative assessment. You can have also the performance assessment. And the thing is, uh, others will also be doing things like audio, video, animation, and the like. You can have actually, this is where academic freedom falls in because teachers can design anything as long as it those things are anchored on the objective or competencies that should be meet or that should meet the module one okay so next we also have some um, timeline and uh, the timeline are subject to the availability of our teachers and speakers okay so I am um, proposing, and that is if it's okay with you, that we will be having upskilling of all teachers. We need this because of the recent trends now that we need to cope with the requirements. Also, how do we go about the, uh, providing proofs, online proofs? Okay, so first, under uh, this coming September 21, if you are available, we will be having model enhancements using Canva. Okay, so uh, before we will have that, okay, let me share to you my sample. Oh, so let me go over with my VLE. So VLE or we have the model. This is now... <clears throat> So I have to click first under the Google. Again, VLE is now a mandatory use of uh, LMS that must be employed by all faculty under SGS. So we have to see, uh, choose the account. And then after signing in, you can see here. By the way, can you see my screen? Hello? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma so based on the dashboard, if you want to see all your courses, oh something is oh wait now. I have to sign out. I have two accounts. Uh, I have separate accounts from, from the graduate school and the college of education. Okay, so I will be using my account from using ano, the college of education account. So here's my uh, my BLE. So you will notice here <clears throat> example, let me see. Assessment in learning, here is my virtual or VLE. So here, this is what I have been saying <clears throat> under the timeline. You, you need to have the Moodle enhancements using Canva, okay? So these things, the one that I have been showing, this one, it's easy. It will not take you five minutes to make this kind of, uh, uh, this kind of GIF. Okay, this is a this is a GIF. This is not a video, and this is possible using Canva. So, and then for your course introduction, by the way, your syllabus must be attuned or must be in sync or synchronized with your VLE. So it's always um, a good practice that there will be course introduction and of course you have to show your yourself there considering that um, your presence in this model can add on somehow psychologically that indeed uh, there is teacher student partnership okay so here this is the one that i have been showing you the engage explore elaborate and evaluate so here, the intended course outcomes, understanding all of these were actually extracted from CHED. Okay, there's a CHED memorandum towards this. So how we do, uh, how we uh, go over, uh, go about with this content will depend on the instructional design that you would like to go over. If you would like to employ the five E's, 
you may do so but on my from my end i only incorporate four e's because the other one is actually explanation i fuse explanation the fifth is uh, with elaboration so i just fuse it under this so i utilize the four e's instead of five e's okay so since this will be our first session so i included the announcement and here there's an icon here which is hyperlink so the moment students will click that link, so it will proceed to Google Meet. So under the enhancement, all right. Okay, where are we? Oh no, no, wala ang aking ano. Where is? Can we go back? Ah, uh, by the way, before I forget, I wanna share something, a technique. Uh, this was actually shown before by Ma'am Liza, and there are professors who fail to. Uh, oh wait. Um, okay. Here in this BLE, you can see the different tabs. All right. If you want that, you can have this one. These are actually my favorites meaning the size that I used to, to, I often use when I, uh, I do the online discussion with my students. So how do we go over, uh, how do we use that? If let's say you have, uh, let's say we will have model. And this site, you would like to include this as your favorite. So you just click the star. Okay, that star. Okay. Once you click that, you click add bookmark. And then you just write small, uh, no, small letters and then few words. Say, for example, uh, you are talking about research. So once you click that, you click done. And then we have another new tab we click the new tab so you can see there uh, you have there the research okay so it appears on my tab my favorite sites all right so here can you see my uh, tabs there are different <laughs> shortcuts actually these are all my favorite so once i have to there's no need for me to click model.ble.edu.ph I will just click this because I have posted it as I start it. Okay, so that's the beauty if you will use this icon, the start. Okay, so you have to use that so that in your tab, you can readily access those things. Alright, so moving on, let's go back. So I have the VLE. For the latecomers, allow me to show the VLE or the Virtual Learning Environment of MSU Jensen. So let me click this uh, subject because I have been teaching this subject for more than two years, uh, almost two years. So you, just like what I've said earlier, we have the Engage, Explore, Elaborate, and Evaluate. So here... This is a hyperlink. So we will have enhancement on this, how we will do it later. Okay, then you can also inject. Uh, okay, we can also inject uh, this one. This uh, picture. All right, so this picture is actually made using Canva. So there is a slide there that you can readily make it and write your name there. So what's the point why we have to do this? Okay, first, we're gonna do something like here, we're gonna edit the section. Anyways, if you, you will notice here, I just place um, this one, if uh, some of you know already how to use Canva, so how do I incorporate this uh, date? Uh, this is very important to give 
framing no? the timeline for the students to complete module one. If you would like to have it by chapter, it's okay. You can have it chapter one, chapter two, or and the like. But on from my end, I will utilize module one. All right. So if you want to edit it, so you just click this one and then that one you type it and then you I click enter. All right. So in order for me to insert this uh, picture this is actually a picture from canva i will simply edit that page and try to look at this one how did i do that okay so this one is actually an insert picture so take note of this this one how did i i put this picture i simply click this one insert image okay and then I insert the image based on where, where did I ex extract it. So I base it from the repository. Okay, then you save the image. Then it's actually an image. All right. So these things are necessary in order to give way to uh, the uh, parang it appears that this mod, this pictures, module one and module two will be your signpost that indeed you have completed this contents. Again, I've mentioned here, the, uh, engage, explore, elaborate, and evaluate. These are all your my instructional design and these are all hyperlinked. So once I click this engage, it will redirect me to this activity okay so students will share what they have learned from the video okay so which video so they will click again this one the engage and then again here's the video hello everyone and welcome to another video of me like classes but first we would like to thank you all for helping us all right so going back again all of this uh, depends on your willingness to proceed to extra mile but mind you all these things though it's a little bit uh, time consuming but this is forever as long as you live here on earth this remains with you you know why let's say for example i i will be transferring from msu going to another university and I want to get all of this, okay, from my end. So what I'm going to do, I will simply click here and then I will back this up and save it. Okay, so say for instance, I will back this up because I want to save all my files here. So I will click next. I will click next. Again, moving down, scrolling down next and then perform back up okay so the moment i click perform back up it will load and then it will be downloadable okay so i will click continue then as i click continue here's the different backups that i made I, you can download your file. So if in that university, say for example, Notre Dame University, you have they have the Moodle, then you can restore that file and have it uploaded in their system. So meaning to say, if we have all of these things that you have been doing, it can still be with you all throughout your life. <laughs> the days of your life as long as you are teaching that subject and you would like to uh, to take hold of what you have done because actually all of these are considered as your intellectual property okay so take note of that then another thing all of these are highlighted so let me share another example for explore so this one if i will click explore so again uh, this is a sample uh, in 10 to 15 sentences, explore the possibility of integrating grass model in your lesson. So here, there is a forum, so take note of this. So last October 2020, I have the discussion with my students and the students were able to 
uh, have the for room and uh, let me check from my end if i'm going to click this let me see their discussion okay so they have the discussion and then aside from that as we proceed to the other discussion they are also into discussing or um, highlighting the other concepts of the learnings acquired by their fellow students. So from the end of the teacher and the students, all of them will be discussing based on that uh, activity, explore. Okay, so moving on, let's go back to the course. Why am I sharing this? If you notice, this is orientation. By the way, this orientation that we are doing right now is purely based on instruction. The other, uh, the other orientation this coming September 25, it will be purely be a discussion from our BKA and our registrar's office uh, under the professor Tersang. Okay, but here we will be discussing so much on how you're gonna uh, run your class, online class using Moodle and so with the Google Classroom. So I will be showing you how to upgrade your, uh, your skills by integrating both Moodle, Google Classroom, and Google Drive. Because in uh, at this point, you see with the move of technology, we really need to upskill, all right? Otherwise, we will be left behind by our students. Sometimes students are better than us. So it's high time that we also need to upskill. Huh? Okay, so let's say, um, let's have the last one, let's say evaluate. Under module two, by the way, here, if you will notice at the left side of the tab, I have, okay, so under module two, let us uh, consider, uh, I only have four modules and Module 1, uh, the schedule was uh, September 14 to 25. And then uh, Module 4 was dated, uh, they have to consume from October 19 to November 2020. But within the middle part, this uh, between Module 2 and 3, I have the assessment. So I have now the Module 1 and Module 2 evaluation. Okay, for module one and module two evaluation, we need to consider halfway now before we give the, the midterm, I suggest that you need to uh, give your evaluation. Okay, so just like this one, once I click that module one and ev uh, module two evaluation, you can see uh, here that students have been, you uh, know, will be giving rate so that you can assess whether your uh the level how you present your lessons are within their level of intelligence or understanding because if students cannot cope with what you have been requiring them then we can uh, experience problems teacher problems or sometimes students may drop out from our class so it's always need, uh, there's always a need for us to invoke evaluation, okay, at the uh, middle part of our uh, modules. Okay, now for module three, so I have incorporated the <laughs> midterm exam under module three because this module three covers uh, a little bit uh, tiresome. So I have to have, uh, I have to move the midterm exam. This was actually now. Uh, the integration with Google Classroom. So let me give you some insights, just like what I have been saying from my colleagues before. We can always integrate Google Classroom with Moodle. So don't just close yourself by simply saying, oh, Moodle is a very difficult LMS or learning management system. I still always, I always prefer to have Google Classroom no you really we have to learn how to integrate uh, google classroom with uh, Moodle so that we can have higher or better efficiency when it comes to delivering the 
instruction. So, basically, I have this midterm. If I click this, can you see my uh, arrow? There's an arrow there. Okay? If the arrow is seen like this, that means it, it, it was not hyperlinked. Okay? So, for me to do that, to have it hyperlinked with, uh, with the Google Classroom, all I need to do is to edit the settings. And then as we edit, I have to click this first and then have this click link. Okay? Then I have to click enter the URL. Okay? I repeat. Uh, let's have this canceled. And this is very important so that you will also know how to use, how to integrate Google Classroom with Model because I don't want to hear people to say, oh, it's very difficult. Yeah, it's really difficult. That's true. But you have to, we have to learn, we have to grow and upskill. So before any, before you proceed to this, you need to have a new tab and then you click the Google Classroom. So let me show you my Google Classroom. <clears throat> so let's say for example uh, okay this one so i have my google classroom and i have my classwork activities so if i have my midterm exam okay you see here midterm exam so in my midterm exam i can edit it or so sorry this is my uh, midterm exam. I will click this and then copy the link. Okay. Yeah. So once I copy the link, I will proceed to Moodle. Okay. And then click edit. Edit settings. So again, this one is just a picture. So I click the picture extracted from Canva and we will have a separate session on this. And then I will click link and then paste the URL. Then create link and then below save and return to course. All right. So moving on, I have now, can you see now? Okay. So it's no longer an arrow. Can you see now the hand? It means that it is already hyperlinked. So once I click, I will close this uh, classroom. All right. So since this is hyperlinked, let me check if we did the right, uh, if we entered the right link. So I will click this. So as I begin to click this, here's now the Google Classroom. So you can see there that students can readily access your exam, integrating Google Classroom with your Moodle. So because in Google Classroom, actually, let's go back to Google Classroom. Let me see the difference between Google Classroom and Moodle aside from the activities. So, if I have the Google, so here's my classwork. So, you see how things are done under Google Classroom. All you can do is simply type this like this and then there's a hyperlink. No other other thing that you can give except for all links and videos. But for Moodle, but for Moodle, you can consider other things and you can combine many things, even the videos and uh, so much. There are so many activities in the Google, in the Moodle, where in Google Classroom cannot compensate those things. Okay, so if if and only if your the requirements say for example for your portfolio the example for your portfolio will entail at least two gigs so never use model because it will slow down the uh, model instead you may probably use i suggest you use the google classroom all right 
So I think I am done with the model. I am highlighting this during our orientation because needless to say, all faculty uh, per uh, based on our uh, meeting, we have uh, all faculty are encouraged to use model because we have been paying LMS model uh, at a higher price. So we have to utilize it. If you are still uncomfortable, it's still normal. It's a normal thing because it's a little bit complicated. But once you are familiar with the uh, environment, no, with the virtual learning environment using Moodle, then it would be easier for the students to navigate. Okay, so moving back. Can you see my screen? So we are, we are done discussing the model enhancement using Canva, not yet, no, not yet pa ito, but hopefully you will, are you, uh, no? are you interested to have the model enhancement using Canva this coming September 21? I would like to ask the people of the Philippines. <laughs> Yes. 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 Yes, Bob. Yes. 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 Okay. yes, yes, yes. Okay. I will be sharing this to you all because uh, from my end, you know, though it's a little bit taxing on my part, but I was so amazed how things are done. You know what? Using Canva, okay, let, just, let me give you some inputs using Canva. you can have the premium account. So once I say premium, it is considered as um, free, free account if you will be using an institutional account like the that edu.ph that is an institutional account, then you can have a Canva for free. But if you will use a personal account, say for example, avarobles at gmail.com, you cannot access the premium account of Canva. In Canva, if you notice here, I have my videos there as introductory part. If you can see from my FB, all these things were actually done using Canva. No? Canva lang po yun. This one, these are all magic comes in with Canva. So there are lots of things that you have to learn about this. And I'm very willing to share if you will spare time to upgrade and to enhance your skills because sometimes we we take a look oh i'm i'm too old already and i don't know how to use video actually you can record yourself using zoom and then after zoom you can edit it and have it placed in the canva because canva has videos ready for you there are templates not just videos but also uh what do you call it anyway uh, we will have a separate session on that because it's a long process, no? So moving on with my discussion, let's have the last, the next part. Uh, we are targeting October 5, that will be next month, crafting of teacher's e-portfolio. So I will be teaching you also how to make your e-portfolio in requirement, no? For the CHED, no? level 3. Because uh, currently, as we apply for level 3, accreditation uh, accreditors are looking for online portfolio and that includes both student and teachers portfolio so along this line with um, e-portfolio it will also be used as our way to monitor the different activities made by students and by teachers okay within the free uh, within the semester so our target date would be on October 5. I hope you will be excited also on this because you know what? This portfolio will stand still up in an online platform forever. And this will serve as your me good memories with your students. And we don't know when will God take us. So at least we have left something behind us. And uh, with e-portfolio, everything will be possible. Because if you will only have Facebook, something like that, it's not really that uh, good enough for us to um, display what we have uh, achieved and what we have um, uh, learned and so with the accomplishments of our students. 
Okay, another thing, and uh, I would like also by this time, I think we have to cut short first because by October 12, hopefully, Dr. Hapus, he's actually my mentor and he's here with us. And I think I have to cut first my discussion because this time, since we are almost complete, you know, basically, I think it's high time that I, we will be learning much from our adjunct faculty. So we have our faculty, Coromel, can you please uh, unmute yourself and introduce yourself. By the way, we will start introducing now our new faculty and uh, Dr. Romel is actually from UAE, Dubai. So sir, may you have- Hi there. Yeah, I hope you can hear me clearly. Good morning, uh, straight from Dubai. Um, yeah, uh, I'm, I'm Dr. Romel Sergio. It's my uh, second uh, decade of teaching, I would suppose, uh, in the area of organizational psychology and human resource management. I'm currently uh, affiliated with Abu Dhabi School of Management. I used to be uh, teaching at the Canadian University, Dubai, and with the LSU back in the Philippines before. So yeah, I'm, I'm so grateful to be part of the teaching force of MSU for this year. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Dr. Romel. And Dr. Romel Sergio actually has many publications and as promised, he will be helping us, sir. Am I right? Sure. <laughs> yes, definitely. Uh, we'll be in partnership yeah, uh, in, in so many levels. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Dr. Romel. We also have with us Dr. Rami from India. Dr. Rami, please. Uh, good morning to one and all. I hope uh, everyone can hear me. Yeah. Uh, I'm Professor Gaurang Rami, uh, associated with Department of Economics, uh, Veer Narmad South Gujarat University, Surat. Uh, I'm in teaching field for around two decades. And uh, my areas of interest are largely in uh, different branches of economics. Uh, specifically on econometrics. Uh, I am teaching quantitative methods, computer application in economic analysis. And uh, in MSU, uh, I'm going to, uh, you know, teach courses related to statistics and data analysis. So uh, I express my sincere and profound thanks to MSU Jensen for providing me this opportunity and looking forward for uh, more association in future and a mutual learning also. Uh, thank you very much, Dr. Awa. Yeah, thank you, Dr. Rami. He is actually a peer mentor and in partnership with Dr. Ivy. Dr. Ivy, ma'am, can you please unmute yourself? Okay. Good morning, everyone. I am uh, Dr. Ivy Corazon Angkog Mangayaay. I'm 33 years old. I'm a graduate of Doctor of Philosophy and Statistics. Uh, thank you, MSU, for uh, welcoming me. I will be teaching statistics and then... Um, my field of expertise is on regression and I will be sharing our software in MSU. Uh, Dr. Ava here have shared that uh, we, we still don't have licensed software. So I will be introducing a free software, but a, ver a very versatile one. So that's it. Um, I hope we can meet soon. Uh, because Yes, thank you, Dr. Ivy. She's actually a graduate from University of... Because I've learned so much from Dr. Ava today, uh, especially on assess... Oh, hello, Dr. Ivy. I think it's, there is a technical problem. Anyhow, we will now have, of course, our Jean Hapus. He is actually my mentor. And you know, I am what I am today because of him, because of his expertise, and I learned so much from him. So, Dr. Hapus, Dr. Jean, ah, okay, let me just Hi, Dr. Jean, please introduce yourself. He is my mentor in this. <laughs> Thank you, Dean Abaclair Marie um, Robles, and um, morning greetings to my brothers and sisters in the vineyard of the Lord as we begin 
our new challenge of um, cloning the Lord's wisdom and also duplicating the Lord's miracle right there in our Zoom classrooms and our Google Meet. I am Hinaro Hapus. I am a Boholano. I just turned 60. All right. And um, my expertise is in the area of research methodology, organization development, human resources, instructional system, educational planning. So um, I will be bringing in to my classes my wealth of experience from my consulting work. I've been full-time as a consultant since 2014 already. So I am helping small, medium, and large-sized organizations um, capacitate them and, you know, uh, heal their certain areas of brokenness and finding how research will be able to make this as a platform for, you know, finding opportunities to learn. And what I can probably bring into the plate as we work together is um, the advocacy for mixed methods research. Uh, because see the type of method that we use reflects also our structure in our civilization for research. And so far today, the best really is mixed methods. Why? Because you can do an experiment on one side and then a phenomenological mm -hmm. study on the other side and then, you know, or you can do um, a regression analysis on one side and then interviews on the other side so that you're able to capture both the breadth and then the depth as well as the perspective of, you know, studying um, social issues and also disciplinary concerns. Mm -hmm. So that is it. And I'm excited to work with people from MSU because as always has been, the MSU is a UP of the South. South Southern Philippines, that is your stature. And if you go to any part of the Philippines, the North Manila, and then in the Visayas, when you ask what is the best school in Mindanao, the answer is always MSU. And that's a great achievement and a great honor on my part to be uh, working with our um, faculty and students. Okay, and the second um, point that I'd like to raise in here is the issue of cross pollination, where uh, Filipinos team teach with foreigners, uh, so that the cross pollination will produce tangible outcomes, and that will lead towards co-authorship collaborations. All right, because um, for example, our foreign-based researchers. Uh, Dr. Yaurang Rami and um, Dr. Romel, um, they are already um, residents of, you know, um, foreign countries. They have imbibed the cultures of the East and the West and the North and the South. Okay. And I am very, very happy also to welcome Dr. Romel, who has, you know, who in my lifetime I cannot even achieve half of what he has done. Uh, he had had he has had trainings in Harvard and even academics there, as well as the universities in the United Kingdom. And uh, I think of late he is in uh, studying in Paris, France. Is that your fourth doctorate, Uh Third, uh, Doctor Jean. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, which means that as a Filipino, you can also clone. To us, <laughs> your the wealth of your experiences, and that's very very nice. Okay. Thank you, Doctor Jin. You inspire us more than ways you don't know. Yeah, thank you. Okay, and then for our resident faculty and visiting professors also of um, MSU, um, excited na po kami lahat to work with you, especially po kay Doctor Ivy Corazon mga yai. Um, she is a you know I would say. That, the gem of a jewel for this country. I have sent her her CV to more than 10,000 people already because I said that if you have problems regarding um, quantitative aspects of your study, go and get her because it is rare to find a teacher who has an expertise uh, that always pulsates for the need to be shared. Sabi niya sa akin, um, Sir Jean, hindi pa ako nagbabayad ng aking edukasyon mula pa sa 
college and then masters in UP and PhD in UP because he was always a scholar ng bayan. So I would like to return to my country what my country has given me. Di bang ganda, no? Okay, so um, regardless of our status, mm -hmm. regardless of our knowledge, experiences, and our backgrounds, we are always a gift to other people. And I think yeah. that is the giftedness that we all want to share. Salamat po. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you, Doc Jean. Very well said. He in, he, indeed, he is actually my mentor when it, in terms of research. And he is actually involved in different uh, organizations internationally and nationally. And the last but not the least, he is actually the prime, no? the, the key people when it comes to UNDP pro project from MSU. We have from GGU or Golden State University, none other than Dr. J. Gonzalez. Dr. J, where are you? Yeah. yeah. I'm very pleased to be and I'm very pleased and honored to uh, be invited. Uh, to be an adjunct faculty lecturer uh, for this coming semester over at uh, MSU Jensen. Golden Gate University, uh, for those of you who don't know, is an MOU partner of MSU Jensen. And part of our partnership is the support that we're going to be giving you through myself and my colleagues, uh, particularly the MPA program. Uh, I am a Mayor George Christopher, Professor of Public Administration and Chair of the Department of Public Administration uh, here at the Adino School of Business of Golden Gate University. I'm also in the Philippines because I run two USAID projects there as the Senior Technical Advisor of uh, SURGE, which is Strengthening Urban Resilience for Growth with Equity, uh, and a new project uh, uh, called uh, CHANGE. So I look forward to sharing some of the uh, wealth of experience. I've been away from the Philippines for 32 years. Oh. And I'm uh, very, very excited po ako tumulong sa, you know, lalo na sa mga estudyante, mag-mentor, mag-coach sa kanila. So maraming maraming salamat po uli, uh, Dean Ava, for uh, this opportunity. Yeah. Having well said, thank you very much, Doc J. And we are very excited to learn much of you. So if you notice, we have uh, different adjunct faculty. We need to do that. Once you say uh, level three accreditation, number one po indicator that we need to add on to our, uh, to MSU, quote and quote, is that we have adjunct faculty. So one thing, uh, for sure, these people on deck from different countries, they are, they will be helping us much, especially on research and other extension uh, services and so forth with regards to your individual webinars. So please be aware that one of the requirements for SGS under my leadership right now are encouraged to have a webinar engagement. And this will be uh, through the SGS uh, YouTube channel. So we will be working much on other engagements, especially so you are selected by the way because you have proven uh, yourself to be worth keeping in the graduate studies. All right, so much with that. So I would like to share this time uh, time for from my uh, colleagues especially uh, we will start from uh, dr john michael john good morning everyone good morning to our adjunct professors from different countries around the world i am happy to be of service to my alma mater currently i am designated as a senior education program specialist for human resource development at Mindanao State University, I'm sorry, at the Department of Education, General Santos City Division. Uh, I am currently tasked to facilitate the learning of our enrollees, specifically on curriculum implementation and school governance and operations. I am also a holder of a master's degree in public administration, and I have been in the teaching profession for the past 15 years. I am with DepEd for the past six years since the implementation of the K-12 program. So 
what I could contribute to the university is the current trends in curriculum implementation and school governance from a depth and perspective, what's happening in the grassroots, and as a regional facilitator and national trainer of the different learning and development interventions of depth ed, I believe I will be able to give you the praxis or meaning linking theory into practice of what really is the current trends in the Philippine educational system. Thank you and good morning for the opportunity. Thank you, Dr. Michael. Thank you very much for your time and sharing your insights to us and contribution. And of course, I want to introduce to you my mother. I have my two mothers here. And we will start first with Doc Ino. Doc Ino. Assalamu alaikum. Can you hear me? Yes, po, loud and clear. I've been with the university since high school. Wow. <laughs> I miss you prep high school. So with the College of Engineering, first with the College of Arts and Sciences as chair of the math department, then College of Engineering, chair of the Electrical and Electronics Communications Department, as well as research and uh, uh, research department wherein that's the, the, the that's one of the way I meet Mr. Dr. Hapos. You've been oh. colleagues. Yes, we have some projects before, uh, but it did not realize with the Department of Science and Technology. Anyway, um, I'm happy to be here despite my age. And you will notice, marami ako ano dito, aking ADHD. <laughs> Really, I really that that was my problem long time ago. I don't have so much patience of what. So uh, yes, bear with me. Maybe because I'm very very old, and I just finished my last vaccine. Anyhow, I'm so happy that you are really indeed uh, indeed very very active. You want us to learn more, pero para sa akin, it's so hard to to change some of the things that I'm used to do. But I'll try my best. Yeah. Uh huh. And uh, uh, with the subjects that I have now, I'm happy that uh, you give into my wish. Thank you so much. And my prayer for all of us, Dr. Hapos, now your picture is there, Hinaro. Uh, I'm very, very glad to be with you. Tell my God will call me. Okay, thank you. God bless to yeah. all. Thank you, Doc Ino. Can we hear from another mother? Mom Nikart, Dr. Nikart. Mom, please unmute. We cannot hear you. Oh, can we hear one of the brains in MSU? We have Sir Priscilliano Campado po, sir. And this will be followed by Mom Campado. Hello, good morning to everyone. And good morning, sir. To our dean, uh, to our dean Abba Clear Robles. Uh, to our adjunct professors, uh, it's really, I would say, a, a golden year for our School of Graduate Studies yeah, to have distinguished adjunct uh, faculty or professors from, from different countries. My name is uh, Presiliano Campado. I started teaching in the university. Mr. Jensen in 1974 and retired in, 19, in 2017, a total of 43 uninterrupted years. Oh. I held uh, several, uh, no, I have, heard, I, I have served the, the university in several capacities as uh, professor of political science as dean of the College of Social Sciences and Humanities for about eight years, seven to eight years, as executive assistant in the office of the chancellor, campus secretary, special assistant. So I am now a retired professor. I am very fortunate and glad that uh, the School of Graduate Studies continues to invite me to teach in, in the, now the 
the MAPS, the Master of Arts in Philippine Studies. I also used to teach subjects in or courses in, in the Master of Public Administration program. But yes, uh, allow me to, to greet uh, Dr. Jean uh, Hapos uh, because I have attended three trainings, oh, yeah, three trainings uh, with him as a uh, training facilitator. He is really a jewel. Yeah, a jewel. That's true. Very brilliant. Very brilliant. Very brilliant. So that's all. Thank you very much. Um, yeah, thank you, sir. Can we have uh, Mom Pampado, please? Yeah. Uh, good morning to everyone. Good morning. Uh, so I started teaching with with MSU General Santos in 1967 as a high school teacher. Then uh, later on, from sa college again, MSU General Santos Community College. Then uh, in 1972. Uh, until uh, from a position of high school to the position of professor. So, because I have been in and out, I uh, have my uh, retirement, my first retirement in 1989, then my mandatory retirement in 2012. So uh, I am now 74 years old. I, I, I was the first dean of the College of Arts and Sciences of MSU General Santos in 1980 until 1983. Then I served as uh, department chair of the Department of Social Sciences of the University of the Philippines in Mindanao in 1982 when I was teaching there. So why, that is why I was saying I was in and out. Now as for the uh, the uh, subjects, I am happy that I am still invited. The subjects that I have been teaching now is with MAPS, uh, but I have taught also in MAID with uh, EDOC 221 and with uh, Educational Management with Fellow 303. So I, uh, I am happy that we have a lot of learning under the new management and that our dean is trying to accommodate uh, and consulting with us with regards to the subject that we are handling. Thank you very much. This is my desire to have all of you introduced, but I think Time will not permit us due to the fact that we are so many here online and I would like to say thank you very much to all of you and uh, I know some of you you have already acquainted yourselves to other people except from one more person and I think she had been with MSU for quite a long time 2010 and he, she just reappeared now and may I call this time Dr. Stella Verana, she is actually my sister. Dr. Stella, please uh, introduce yes. yourself. So good morning everyone to Dr. Robles and our very, uh, very collaborative adjunct professors and fellow members of the teaching club. I find it pure joy to be part of uh, the teaching force of our dear alma mater as mentioned by Doc J.M. I am Estela Marie Octarit Berana. So you can call me Estelle. And my field of expertise is in the area of HR, human resources, since I am a an HR practitioner for almost 30 years now. And I've been teaching in the grad school of Mindanao State University of uh, NDMU and NDDU for almost 20 years now. So it's my privilege to be part of you and we can complement each other knowing that I am working closely with very talented 
and very passionate teachers. So let us continue to use our talents or gift things to to make the our dream work to establish very good uh, you know output in terms of uh, our students and bringing glory to our school msu and to the lord back to you dr robles thank you for the opportunity all right so thank you dr verana uh, so this time we will have the last one he is actually our student before in the disds and now he is a full-fledged doctor we have sir leonard flores and after this we will have a uh, photo ops to all of us so please stay tuned and he will be the last to introduce the rest of you i know we know each other well okay and also we also have mom norlaila kanakan pa pala so after sir leonard we will have mom norlaila then we will have a photo ops okay then we will end our session with that sir leonard please yeah uh, magandang jansan sa ating lahat na magandang jansan to everyone no i'm happy to be to be part again of the Middle East State University uh, teaching course, but actually I've been I've been uh, sharing my my time uh, way back five or six years back pa. No, so I'm currently the city economic manager of the city of General Santos, and that uh, for the last twenty years I also work as um, um, officer of the Department of Trade and Industry. That's the reason why I, I, I've been given the privilege to, to teach in the Masters in Business Management. And since I'm also a graduate of the uh, university for the program Public Administration, so I've been also um, handling public um, management subjects then. And that um, now I'm glory to God. I'm happy that uh, I became the first product of this new program of the university, the Doctor of Sustainable Development Studies. And then again, um, as we promised the Lord, we shall continue to maximize our journey, our existence, and continue to inspire other individuals. So, um, and not only work for the city, work for the national government, and, but I'd like also to share my, my, my whatever I, I can, I can um, provide to our graduate students uh, in Sox Surgeon region. Not only in Mindanao. So again, I'm honored to be part of this teaching force, and I'd like to say thank you, Dr. Abba Robles, for this opportunity. Thank you, and God bless us all. I have someone special to introduce to you also. He, we have a new lecturer, and he is the one of the prosecutor in the region, uh, regional level. We have Attorney Felipe Macaldo, sir. Attorney, are you there? Can you please introduce yourself? Can we have Sir Ang? Sir Michael Ang is actually uh, one of our students in uh, SBS. Uh, yes, please introduce yourself, Sir Ang. Uh, good morning, uh, Dean Abba. Good morning to all the uh, faculty members of the uh, School of Graduate Studies of MSU. Uh, I'm Michael Ang. Um, Allow me first to thank everyone for uh, giving me the opportunity to be part of this prestigious institution, to be a lecturer. Um, I have finished my uh, master's in Master of Arts in Urban and Regional Planning at the University of the Philippines, Mindanao. And I'm currently um, on my process of doing my dissertation at the um, MSU Graduate Studies on uh, the course of uh, doctor in Sustainable Development Studies, uh, major in Economic Development. And I hope to finish that within a year's time. So uh, thank you very much. And um, I hope uh, I would be able to get the support of everyone in my uh, first venture with MSU as a lecturer. Thank you, Dean Ampa. Thank you, everyone.